It's an empty case. I'm pretty sure the refill will be tomorrow's. Yes. Hi. I'm gonna have to remember to sit straight to get the sunnies. <laughs> to get this sunnies in frame. Today's gonna have to be another daytime talking portion because I have nighttime plans again and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to Universal Studios for a work party. They book it out for like a few hours, which means that I get to go on the rides with no lines. I have to pay for my own food, but at least there's no lines. <laughs> and that is enough for me to get excited and for me to smile from ear to ear. <laughs> LA is just so crowded. <laughs> and today's agenda is <laughs> to wrap the gifts that I have accumulated so far while my kid is at school and some of them are books and I wanted to talk about them and why I'm gifting them for the particular recipient. But first of all, I got the special anniversary edition of Harriet the Spy in this lovely hardback that I was reading with my son. I'm gonna give this to my son because he enjoyed it so much as well as Harriet the spy double agent and harriet spies again and his very own <laughs> black and white speckled wide ruled need composition book for him to write all of his secrets in that i am not allowed to read i can't wait to give this to him i'm so excited about this <laughs> If, if anything just for him to work on his penmanship i need some work I'm wearing that blush that I got in my advent calendar yesterday. This this is what it looks like. You, you can kind of see it. It's very Japanese style, meaning that it's near invisible. It does like something. It's like a whisper of color, but it's definitely glowy. It's okay. I'm, I'm enjoying it right now. I've also been getting really into, I, I'm sure that she's, huge on TikTok with the youths, but I started following perfumerism. I'm very into fragrance. I used to sell fragrance. I used to work in retail at the beauty department and a department store, and it's just a hobby that I haven't indulged in a while, and I have so many samples that I haven't even smelled yet, and, and it just reminded me to get back into that again, so I tried this. I tried this today, it's the Henry Rose Queens and Monsters EDP. So I have this little sample and I'm, I must say, should I tell you the notes? Are the notes even on this? It comes with this little, I don't even know what you call it, like a PR card, but, but essentially it's a very like floral and sandalwoody fragrance, which Here's the reason why I kind of got off a of fragrance lately. This is the exact, this is the perfect example, but everything just started smelling the same. Like everything started smelling floral and woody and vanilla-y and musky. It's just been the fragrance of the 2020s. What was the fragrance of like the 2010s? That was when I was selling fragrance. I'm pretty sure that was like when we were in a very almost gourmand era where it would kind of be the same. Probably the fragrance of the 2010s is that, oh, I'm blinking, Santal 33 <laughs> by La Lavo. And it's the one that smells kind of like this, where it's very like heavy on the sand, heavy on the woods and florals, but it's also got that bit of gourmand. Like that's the one that a lot of people would say smells like pickles. I, didn't, I never really got the pickle note in that one, but it just made people feel fancier. It made them feel sexy. It made them feel, you know, like 
they're the hottest bees in Brooklyn and dressed all in black and yeah after that I feel like in our 2020s they took the 2010s fragrance and just took out the gourmand aspect of it or at least took out like the sourness of it and replaced it with vanilla vanilla is everywhere that's the other thing that everything smells like everything smells like a variety of vanilla and i don't know like vanilla is fine I'm, I'm not the biggest fan i'm a huge rose person that was probably the 2000s fragrance of the decade everything smelled very heavy on patchouli and rose and like all all types of flowers whether it be like a white flower or a red flower or a black flower so that was definitely my comfort zone of fragrance like you know most girls start off with like the fruity florals and then they tend to separate either into straight into florals or straight into the woods <laughs> anyway I'm gonna try and smell more things I guess I'll be reporting back on that <laughs> over the next few days and yeah Henry Rose Queens and Monsters it's okay I'm not offended by any part of it but it does smell like everything else. If you're into that. So I'm gifting one of my best friends two books. The first one is <laughs> Howard Stern Comes Again by Howard Stern. I think I read this book back in 2021, maybe 2020. And I actually found it really incredible. <laughs> it's a compilation of Howard Stern's interviews with you know, all the celebrities that he's spoken to. And it kind of talks about like how much he's changed, how much he's grown. Yes, there's even a Harvey Weinstein interview in here, Anderson Cooper. But in every conversation, he talks about how much therapy has helped him in his life and has some really contemplative conversations with all of these celebrities. So I am gifting this to my friend who I just talk about celebrities with nonstop. I don't think that she'll terribly like the aspect that it's coming from Howard Stern. However, it's up to her if she wants to read it or not, but that's the intention that I am giving this to. And I am also giving her The Dutch House by Anne Patchett in this like really iconic hardback cover with the deckled edges and I am giving this to her because well first of all it this cover just cannot be beat it is a wonderful cover and when I was reading this book which the audiobook is read by Tom Hanks and he does a phenomenal job like at points I wasn't even really paying attention to the story I was just too enraptured listening to his voice but the story itself I just found so gossipy and like you know very hand over your mouth dramatic gasp at all of the plot twists and the audacity of humanity so I just found this to be like a really fun gossipy book that I know that my celebrity obsessed friend will enjoy and yes of course I have to include a bookmark which is from humdrum paper and it's gonna look like a chocolate bar is sticking out of the pages when you use it so I thought of her she is sugar obsessed. I'm giving another friend of mine cast by Isabel Wilkerson because she is a very socio-political person and very anti-capitalist and we constantly debate about is it racism or is it capitalism like it's both the answer is both but like this really gets into the hows and whys and whats of it all. She also likes sushi, so that's the bookmark that I chose for her. It also is a two-in-one. Oh, I already taped it to the back, but behind the sushi, there's a second like bonus bookmark of chopsticks. So it's gonna look like she's holding her place in the book with, you know, either chopsticks or with a kimbap roll. And then for that same friend, I'm also giving her. How to Do Nothing by Jenny O'Dell. I read this, did I read her this year? Last year? No, this year, which I really enjoyed. And she is also very, did I mention she's very anti-capitalist? <laughs> so I thought that this anti-capitalist manifesto will be perfect for her. I also, for all of these books, have my From the Library of Modern Ajima sticker with this really cute uh, stamp 
on every title page so that they think of me. So these next books I'm giving to some children in my life and by children I mean they're like their age range is from 17 to 27. <laughs> But for me, they're my children, and so I am giving Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles to somebody who always comes across to me as very nihilistic and like very blasé about life. And for her, I immediately go to sci-fi, dystopian of course, and I haven't read every single one of Ray Bradbury's books, however, The Martian Chronicles is my hands down favorite. I read it in high school, I think, and she probably already might have too, but nevertheless, I thought of her <laughs> when I thought of what book to get to each of these kids in my life. So yes, <laughs> this is something that she can keep, whether or not she's read it or not. And though it's dystopian and the story itself is quite bleak, it still has, like with all Bradbury's books, some hope at the end and some beautiful moments, of course beautiful writing, and hopefully we'll remind her that she isn't alone, that we are all on the same ship as they say. I'm gifting War by Richard Overy for uh, another child in my life who has grand ideas of military service and I think I read this book in 2020, 2021, so several years ago. But I, again, really enjoyed it. It's all about, as in the title says, a hundred battles that changed history. And they're all listed by battle name for quick referencing. So he's not that big of a reader. However, he can kind of just read, like not from cover to cover and just read it like a battle at a time. And they're pretty short chapter like short battle chapters so <laughs> I consider this easy reading despite like the thickness of it for him. There's even color imagery inside the book so there really shouldn't be much of an excuse for him to you know tell me that he can't read this and my intentions for this book given to him is he can read about the battles of the past and how strategy stories of leadership, really stories of humanity have impacted the lives of us all. And hopefully if he does ever join the military, he can keep this with him inside his heart, inside his brain. I am gifting David Sedaris's classic Holidays on Ice to a special child in my life who I am pretty sure has never read a David Sedaris, but can definitely understand the sarcasm, the wit, the criticism of people's hypocrisy, which is what this book is about. I will never forget, there's a, there's a hilarious Amazon review for this book saying like this lady had bought multiple copies of this for her family members to <laughs> as gifts thinking that this would be like light hearted frivolous tales set around Christmas time only to read it for herself after gifting them and being shocked by the actual content of this in the back of the blur <laughs> the back of the book the blurb the top blurb is not remotely politically correct or heartwarming <laughs> so i'm hoping that he finds this hilarious and he finds this relevant to his life which I think he will. I am gifting Sloane Crosley's I Was Told There Would Be Cake for a special person who I think mostly reads popular fiction. However, these are essays, so I'm hoping for a little branching out. And this is perfect for someone who is in their early 20s, starting out in life. I also reread this, I think this year, because I could get it as an audiobook and still found it to be really delightful. The writing is as always from Sloane Crosley, razor sharp, and this was her debut, I'm pretty certain. Yes, this is another cover that I absolutely love, and I'm hoping that the recipient feels like this is a little out of the normal, like out of the comfort zone, and finds a lot of newness from this. <laughs> and last, and definitely very much not least, I am gifting a special person, Donna Tartt's The Secret History. I am pretty sure the recipient has yet to read this, 
and we've had several conversations now about how they just don't know like a lot of things a lot of like random historical things current events <laughs> and while i find that almost an essential part of this person's personality and character i really want the recipient to read this <laughs> and even though this is a very big chunky book with like some very tiny writing they're still young enough to be able to see this it's not going to be too much and there is no other story that is as like gripping from page one does such a thing as the fatal flaw that showy dark crack running down the middle of a life exist outside literature i used to think it didn't now i think it does and i think that mine is this a morbid longing for the picturesque at all costs so i really want this person to again, branch out and read something <laughs> substantial. I'm not one of those like people who praise the secret history above all else. Like, I think it's just fine. I think the writing in this is particularly fun and should compel any reader to continue reading no matter how apprehensive they may feel about the size of this. And I'm hoping for like the book talkiness and dark academia trendiness that this carries has enough weight for the recipient to continue to pursue other finer literature out there. Hopefully this be the gateway to the rest of their literary life. So far, those are the books that I am giving to my loved ones and I'm really hoping that they like them. I will of course be including like a note in each book explaining my intentions of gifting them these books. And now I gotta wrap all this. <laughs> so today the talking portion will be a little bit shorter. I hope it was a little more fun, more holiday-y. And the rest of the footage will be my fun times at Universal Studios, yay. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Let me know if you have other ideas for book giving. I find book giving to be both challenging and not challenging. Like sometimes as it was for the case of all of these books actually, it was really easy for me because I, mm, yes, a hundred percent of these books I got from my library store and you know most of these are in like perfect condition and I thought of this person as I was reading it so in that sense it was very easy like no extra thought was necessary however it can be so hard if you are just thinking you know after the fact like blind oh I need to give this person this specific person a gift I would love it for it to be books because this person loves books however which books should I give this person like that's when it's challenging because it's so personal it's like it's like fragrance how do you gift someone something so personal <laughs> at least the books it can be less expensive right <laughs> than a bottle of perfume so i hope that the specificities of my book giving thought process helped you in any way and i will see you again tomorrow bye bye hey hi hello so why not? Rappelling off the roof, Icarus said. He grabbed the harness. Another one? On the, yeah. Right there. Then if you the wrong, it will act as a boot. Oh, that's the same one. Stubborn reminder, one perfect night starting